I had over 103 degree fever, um, chills, pain. Erin started to notice these ulcerations on her legs, very painful, had never had them before. It was one of those horror story type of experiences in the hospital. As a diagnostician of dermatology, I specialize in decoding the mysteries of rare and complex skin conditions. A skin finding may actually be the sign of internal pathology. I'm here to reveal it as your SkinTel agent. It's Saturday morning and we're on our way to Banner University Medical Center to follow up on a woman named Erin that I had the privilege of meeting a few days ago. I was consulted because Erin started to notice these ulcerations on her legs, uh, very painful, had never had them before. She's a lovely woman. She's 38 years old and a mother of three, um, her youngest being five months of age. And so obviously being in the hospital is not where she wants to be. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah. How, how are you feeling today? Um, not bad. I um, am in a little bit of pain from time to time, um, but definitely a lot more managed than it was before. I think one of the things would be good is maybe we talk just about, you know, what happened here in the past couple weeks with okay. the leg injury. Like, okay. you know, you're a Mother of three, happy along living your life of crazy, yep. uh, nursing student, et cetera, and all of a sudden you're out deciding you're gonna take up paddle boarding because you don't have enough to keep yourself yeah. busy. Uh, <laughs> and bumped into a rock, no laceration. If we're going all the way back, I um, was diagnosed with a autoimmune disease at 19. Um, I was running track at the U of A, kind of caught flu-like symptoms, um, wasn't feeling good, lost a lot of weight, and so my mom just, you know, was like, go and get some lab work done. And so my mom made me go to the sports doctor, and that just kind of started this whole cycle of uh, diagnostic tests, trying to figure out biopsies, ERCPs, endoscopies, the whole thing. They ran some blood panels, things came up normal until they did a full panel and looked at my um, liver and all of my enzymes were highly, highly elevated. Um, so they went through all of the tests and process and probably about nine months later, they were able to diagnose me with um, primary sclerosing cholangitis, which is a disease found in middle-aged overweight white men <laughs> so Sounds just like totally you. me yeah. just three years ago um, noticed that i was starting to get some stomach um, issues and i thought it had to do with old age you know i was past 35. <laughs> you know ice cream didn't go yeah. so well and things like that that they always tell you happen um, and then one day i had had just a bout of uh, diarrhea went to the bathroom and there was nothing but pure blood in the toilet and i immediately called my doctor she sent me straight to the hospital so that um, put me back in the hospital and that's honestly the sickest i've, I've ever been in my life. Um, I had over 103 degree fever, um, chills, pain. It was one of those horror story type of experiences in the hospital. In my week, I have Saturday mornings from after I feed the baby, which is around 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. And that is like my only time where I can get away on my own. And so she was like, I'm gonna kidnap you real quick and we're gonna just go out to the river. And I was like, totally awesome, been wanting to do this forever. And uh, so we went out and um, she showed me what to do. And in me getting on the board, I slipped um, and hit my shin on a rock. No lacerations, no blood, just a contusion. Like just injury. Yep, just a bump. It hurt, but you know, I looked, I wasn't bleeding, fine, got on the paddleboard, had a great time. Not until two weeks later, 
Um, I went to go to a party, I was wearing a pantsuit, and I realized that my pantsuit was slightly sticking to my shin. And so I lifted my um, pant leg up and I there was a small, small, um, like, it looked like it picked off a scab a little mm -hmm. bit. So just a little bit of exposed skin. It's easy to walk into a room and see something and just you know, walk away with a diagnosis and a treatment plan, but sometimes understanding how diseases really you know, influence it's one clear. another mm -hmm. is, is uh, not only fascinating to us as scientists, yep. but also meaningful in how we think about the control of you moving forward with both of these disease mm -hmm. processes. So as I discussed with you on um, Wednesday evening, you know, pyoderma gangrenosum is like this inflammatory stew inside your skin that's brought there usually from some form of injury that otherwise under normal circumstances with a normal immune system would be a contusion that you know crescendos when you hit it and decrescendos in the days that pass thereafter rather for you and your immune constitution mm -hmm. your immune system is sort of confused so it goes in there to try to heal the contusion but because of that dysregulation you're Immune cells sort of are functioning like a circuit on a computer motherboard, you know, where one thing tells another thing to tells another thing to tells another thing to, you know, on off switches. Yep. Pyoderma gangrenosum is an auto inflammatory disease. It, um, by virtue of the inflammatory infiltrate, the inflammatory cells which are migrating into her skin tissue for no good reason other than to destroy her skin tissue. There's no infection there. Uh, there's nothing that they ought to be doing. They're just bad actors. Usually when this disease incites itself in the skin, it's a disease that fairly rapidly gets quite a bit worse um, without appropriate intervention. So in the acute setting using IV therapies in the hospital, we utilize steroids, intravenous steroids as a treatment modality to get this infiltrate, which ought not to be in her skin, to calm down. Uh, steroids have their own risks associated with them. Risks that could put her, you know, in other forms of distress. Otherwise, we try to minimize the use of steroids and instead find what we call a steroid sparing agent for long-term maintenance. Interesting as that might be, you know, we target both of the disease states, both your pyoderma gangrenosum and your ulcerative colitis, by trying to manage them, you know, in a like-minded way where we can intervene and try to kill two birds with one stone. Obviously, it does depend, you know, how deep and broad right. these ulcerations are before we get them to turn the corner. But usually you'll be actually pretty surprised with the steroids that you've been on and then what we're hoping to get you on in the outpatient setting, which will be an injection medication you can give yourself every other week, or sometimes we do it every week, um, that'll probably be something that starts the resolution much more quickly. Okay. And you'll see that you're back to normal skin, I would imagine, within four weeks. So I agree with you. These are getting still a little bit worse day by day. So right now she's on what's called IV solumedrol, an intravenous infusion of steroids. And my anticipation is that tomorrow we'll be able to give her her last dose and then transition her to oral steroids in the form of prednisone. And that'll bridge us for a little while until we can get the authorization from her insurance company um, to approve a maintenance medication. Uh, about how long is it going to take for these to yes. ultimately be healed? I wish I had the crystal ball. We always want that crystal ball. Truth is, it really is contingent upon how much worse it gets before it starts to turn the corner to really improve. Okay. You know, it's it's hard to tell. I can really only see, I really can only see this one. The other one are just pictures. Um, I can't tell if it's better until they really like clean the drainage out of it. Um, to me, it looks bigger every time I look at it, but I know the last time you looked at it, you, you seemed positive about it, which made me feel a little positive about it. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I told you you would feel oh better about that. Oh my gosh. Much. When you think about what the skin actually does for us along a lifetime, from 
all the repair work it does from every injury you've ever had, every laceration, every bruise, um, every dry skin, you know, rash from washing your hands too many times, and how many things your skin is dealing with every day. Um, it's, it's our interface with the universe, uh, and it protects us in so many ways that are very important. And when something goes wrong physiologically with our skin, the outcome of that can be so grave. I don't like for things to control my life. I like to think that I can control some things and I learned very quickly that I was going to have to find a different way to live the life the way I wanted to um, and yet still accommodate the things that were going on inside. So um, it's been a long, long process, but um, I learned doesn't, I grow and adjust. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. sound like it got you down. No. I mean, my goodness. No. Those were the nurses that were involved mm -hmm. in your life and mm -hmm. your care, and they were an inspiration to you. Yep, absolutely. They should be an inspiration to all of us, really. And that's when you were then yep. decisive about your next steps, yep. which was, I'm going to be a nurse too. I'm going to be a nurse. Yep. And I didn't awesome. know, and I still don't know where in nursing um, I want to be, but I knew I wanted the knowledge of it. I wanted the clinical side of it. So not only understanding the disease process, but the treatment of it and how to help um, patients in that way and then figure out where I fit in the whole scope of it all. Just in the past like two or three days, um, I really have seen a difference in not only just how it looks, but the size of it. And uh, so I feel a lot better about the progress on my, on my wounds for sure. Since then, I have, I'm back to work um, with the kids, as you can see, uh, getting back to somewhat of a normal life and uh, just happy to be getting back to normal, so yeah.